Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is your boy Keenan Lambert and in this video I'm here in Santiago de Cuba. We're going to talk about traveling outside of Havana, traveling outside of Veradero and other popular areas that people go to when they tend to travel to Cuba. Let's talk about it. <laughs> First question being, should you travel outside of the commonly visited western end of Cuba, the Havanas, the Veraderos, the Vinales? Absolutely. On principle, you guys know that I would say that. However, it's very important that you remember this is Cuba. There are certain rules, there are certain norms. Okay, chaos, right? Chaos when it comes to services, when it comes to connection, should be expected here in Cuba. In other parts of the country outside of Havana, Verdero, the food just continues to get worse. Now the reason why is just because they are not getting fresh materials. The chicken that you consume here is not actually produced here. It might be produced in the United States, Brazil, or another country. And because it just takes a long time to get here and the refrigeration is a bit subpar, it can taste old at times. Now, of course, this is coming from a Jamaican-American, someone who is very much used to very deeply seasoned food. So, you know, if you have a different experience, if you're used to in more of a bland style of food, or maybe, you know, your palate is just a little bit wider than mine, then you might have a different experience. But yes, the food here in Santiago de Cuba is terrible, right? <laughs> Things are a lot more cheap when you come out to this western side of Cuba. Now, the reason why is there aren't so many tourists, right? So the prices aren't inflated. Um, and also, you're not really getting uh, the same quality that you might get in Havana, although that quality is not high at all. But still, you're getting a little bit less quality and everything is cheaper. And when it comes to the accommodations, um, the accommodations here in Santiago, it varies. It just depends on how much you're willing to spend. Um, whereas in Havana, it's kind of the same thing. However, I would say that there are more options that you have in Havana because there's just that tourist infrastructure. Here in Santiago, I mean, there were more tourists at a certain point in time, but not so much now. Now, Santiago is very much one with the countryside, right? You have this small city, very tight city, and then there are hills literally on every side. You have the Sierra Maestra actually way down there. Um, it's also on the other side, but you can't really see it from the way how I have the camera positioned. Anyway. The Sierra Maestra is notable and iconic in Cuban history. Fidel Castro and his revolutionaries actually hit out in this mountain range, fighting numerous battles against Fulgencio Batista's military. However, it's important to note, without the help of local campesinos, Fidel's army would have starved to death. Anyway, um, Santiago de Cuba is very much one with the countryside, whereas when you're in Havana, it doesn't necessarily feel so. As soon as you get like right outside of the city, like boom, you're hit with immediate countryside. Um, and you know, it's kind of refreshing to actually experience that. Now, Santiago de Cuba has a different history that Havana Havana was you know always the crown piece well actually technically not always the crown piece but it was the major port where you have a lot of different groups coming in more cosmopolitan city whereas Santiago de Cuba feels extremely Caribbean actually being here reminds me a lot of being in Jamaica you still have the <laughs> the I don't know the very worn Cuban look but in terms of the culture in terms of the people, it feels a lot like I'm in Jamaica or I'm in Capetian in Haiti. Now, the population here it tends to be a lot darker. The reason why is because there was significant migration from Haiti, from Jamaica to this side of Cuba, and over time, individuals moved into the city if they weren't here previously. I met a gentleman previously who actually scammed the hell out of me on the price of a, a SIM card, but anyway. Um, 
a gentleman, uh, we were talking and he ended up, he spoke you know, pretty good English. It had almost like a Jamaican twang to it. Um, and he asked me where I was from and I told him and he said, yeah, yeah, my grandfather was from Jamaica. He was from Kingston actually. And of course, given the history of Santiago de Cuba, you find a lot of people with a similar history where they have grandparents, great grandparents from other places. The United Fruit Company was very active actually uh, in you know, maybe central and, and eastern Cuba where they invited a lot of people to come in and work in the agricultural industries also in the port as well and along with this being the more Caribbean city you know out in the streets you can hear a lot of reggae music dance hall etc a couple days ago I was strolling through the north end um, strolling to the north end of the city and you know it was just beard dance on reggae I was hearing in the streets I was I was surprised I broke out a little dance and people were enjoying it too I didn't get that on camera but still um, it was a vibe now of course I know there's a lot of you gentlemen out there and I don't know maybe some women that uh, like to travel for relationships uh, short relationships or longer relationships well um, I can say that in Havana people are more direct in approaching you right they have no qualms about pulling up to a foreigner and having a conversation in english or in spanish um however out here in santiago people you know they'll be interested but instead of coming to you to say something they'll stare okay um there's a lot of staring that happens here whereas in havana they're just pulling up on you quick they'll take a quick look and they'll pull up on you that's, that's at least been my experience. For those of you guys who may have had a different experience in Havana or here in Santiago, go ahead, let me know. Now, this is something that I actually left out of a previous video that I did on something related to this topic. In Havana, it's very much okay for a woman to come inside of your, to come into your apartment. Okay, it's very normal for a woman, a woman to come into your apartment and spend the night or you know, spend a couple hours and enjoy time with you. Here in Santiago, the society is a little bit tighter, okay? For a woman to spend the night, it is, I wouldn't say impossible, but you might have to sneak her into your Airbnb or into your hotel room. And for me, you know, it's not something that I'm currently engaging in. However, um, for a lot of you gentlemen out there, or maybe some of you young ladies, um, you might not be interested in you know, having to go through the painstaking task of getting somebody into your place. So being here, you know, might be a little bit of a pain in the neck. Some of you may be asking, hey, Keenan, if you were to meet a girl that you like, etc., would you maintain a girlfriend here in, in San Diego de Cuba? And my answer is hell no, absolutely not. Um, I think when it comes to just maintaining a girl in a different country, it's really difficult. Um, Santiago de Cuba is more isolated, people need more um, because it's just a lot less and it would just take too much resources. Hell no, I wouldn't do it. No, here in Cuba, um, you know, it's kind of a society that is isolated and on the western side of the island in Havana, it is isolated, however, there are flights coming in. I don't know if it's, it's definitely over 20 flights per day coming in from other places, other countries, etc. Here in Santiago de Cuba, you have some flights that come from Haiti. I believe there's one from Jamaica that comes a couple times a week, but there's only one flight per day coming in from Miami. And that's a connection with the westernized world. I don't believe that there are any flights from Canada or from Europe. Um, from what I notice here in Santiago, there isn't that deep culture of, um, excuse me if I say this wrong, geneterismo. Um, check me if I said that wrong, all right? There isn't that deep culture of women getting with foreigners for the purpose of getting things out of them and then bettering their life here. As I've said in previous videos, there's something that is, you know, more than sending money back to Cuba that is helping people get out of Cuba. A lot of the young people here just want to get out, okay? I was actually taking a drive with a driver here. Um, I have a driver, he's cool. He's an engineer and then he does taxi the majority of the time because, you know, being a taxi driver, what he'll make in one day is more than what he's going to make in a month as an engineer. But what he explained to me was that his daughters actually, they're I believe 25 and 20, they both really want to get the heck out of Cuba. And why? For the simple fact that there just isn't a lot of opportunities here in Cuba. Um, there are some opportunities, I guess, in Havana, but at the same time, they don't really pay all that much. Here in Santiago de Cuba, there is not that much tourism. I mean, I've been here 
for some good time now and I can count the amount of times I've seen an obvious tourist on two hands. When I was taking the flight to come here, right there, it was a full plane and it was myself and maybe two other people who didn't have a connection to Cuba in terms of family. Okay, and because of that, there aren't the bountiful amounts of opportunities that are connected to the tourism industry here. Well, understand that this just isn't a Cuban situation. This is something, if you've been paying attention to the channel, this is something that is common across the Caribbean. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're an intellectual, um, if you have you know, done six years of, of, of post-grad, etc., here in the Caribbean, it's just really hard to come by money, regardless of what your situation is, unless you are in the tourism industry and you're able to get those foreign dollars. Getting foreign dollars here is everything. But, you know, there are some of you who actually might be interested in walking around and being one of few tourists, right, uh, that might appeal to you, right, that there's some places, such as, say, Cartagena, that have a very very deep infrastructure when it comes to tourism and then attached to that deep infrastructure are people that try to make money off of it the hustlers they can almost ruin the experience that you have on the beach I actually have a video that I did from the beach of Cartagena it was crazy literally every I don't know every 60 seconds another vendor was coming to me to try to get something else out of me um, but uh, here in Santiago de Cuba there's a hell of a lot less of that um, because they just don't have that deep tourism infrastructure. It doesn't exist here. Or maybe I shouldn't say that it doesn't exist. It's it's dormant. It's dormant right now. Now, the party atmosphere here, it's good. It's good. Um, you, again, you hear a lot of dancehall, some reggae, as well as the local music. There's salsa, son. You actually hear some reggaeton, the Cuban style of reggaeton, which is, which is a little bit different than what you might hear normally in Miami. Unlike Havana, which has plenty, Santiago de Cuba has a few lounges, but the real vibe is outside. It's in these public spaces that it goes down, Plaza Marte, down by the waterfront, etc. For sure. um, based on what I've seen though, there seems to be a gap. I see a lot of people that are maybe like 20 and under, but then when it comes to that 25 to 35 group, you don't see a lot of them out having fun. They're probably actually at home with kids, raising kids. Here, this is a society where people just have kids a hell of a lot earlier. Okay, you might see a woman that is about 30 years old and she has, you know, maybe three, four kids. You see that in the United States too, but here in Santiago de Cuba, you see women just with more children, the way how things used to be uh, back in the day. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video and watching all of my previous videos. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm going to see you guys in the next one and the one after that. Deuces.